Hello everyone, this is Bobby at Coppel TV Repair and today we're going to be bench testing power supply board. I'm sure it has many different numbers. Um, one of them will be 715G8549-P01-000. There's 003H, and that's going to be the visual part number here. Um, but more importantly, this is the power supply board uh, in Visio M75 Edno. It is very, very similar in design and, and testing approach, even in connectors, to the M65 version of the same TV for which I believe I have made a video at least a year ago but if you search for it you will find out another video with very very much the same content. The reason for that video is a particular customer who sent that board for repair saying there was nothing on the board uh, when he was testing it and I don't know how he was testing it but when we tested it bench tested it right out of the box it, it, it just came functioning. Now you can see a little bit of burn here on the top and there is a voltage regulator or a transistor switching transistor on the back on that spot this is not unusual um, it may indicate a failure but it does not necessarily have to it may go like that and grow even more brown and start drying and at some very distant point in future it may burn but it may still be working so that alone is not an indication of a problem uh, upon testing the usual fuses and shortage on power transistors, switches, everything, uh, nothing was found bad. So what you do is you search for a connector that produces standby voltage. Every power supply board when connected to AC outputs somewhere for the sake of the brain of the TV. And the same is true for pretty much every electronic device. It has a you know power source in it, which is every electronic device. Uh, there's got to be some juice to operate the very minimum that this device needs in order to be activated uh, when something, a customer button tells it, wake up. Uh, that place on this board is right here. And you usually find it by two things. Uh, there will be something that will be labeled, something like standby. And in this case, there is nothing that is labeled like that because the only output that this board gives is reportedly 19 volts. Uh, and that goes to the main board and the main board will further lower it down for its purposes to 5 volts, 3 volts, 1 volt, whatever it needs. But this board does have a signal, which is the other telling sign that says PS on off, which is power supply on off. And what it means is... Okay, so this board produces something that most of the time will be a separate standby voltage, like uh, 5 volts or 3.3 volts. But in some of TVs, they just output one high voltage and then let the main board deal with lowering it down for its internal purposes. For something that is very low consumption, just standby circuit that, that waits for awakening signal. And when that awakening signal arrives to the main board, which is usually done by pressing a button or sending a, an IR command to the IR sensor that is uh, then <clears throat> converted to a simple wake-up call for the main processor. The main processor on the main board, what it does is it sends voltage back to the power supply board specific to the pin called ps on off it can be called many different things it can be just called ps on it can be called activate it can be called p on and sometimes it is active when it is zero that is for uh some plasma boards and for most LED power supplies, it is active when it's 1, and 1 means 3.3 to 5, 6 volts. Now, here's a small problem here. We're outputting 19, and to wake up the board, and that is to say, to tell other circuits, and to tell those two connectors to receive voltage, in this case 24 volts, um, that's what's waking up is, is called. Uh, that board expects back most likely, and typically you should assume something like 5 volts, not 19. 
And so what we have done for the sake of testing was a simple voltage divider for that connector. I'm using the connector that was developed for the other board that I mentioned for the 65 inch version of the TV. And it simply takes the 19 volts and they do not necessarily have to be 19 when you measure them by the way. Uh, but long story short, you get to a point where to see first you have to have a standby voltage. This is connected to AC. One of the first things you want to measure is that you do have a voltage <coughs> on the mains capacitors. And there are some exceptions to that rule as well on some boards that are relay driven. But basically what you want is you go to those main mains capacitors and you check and see that there is 166 volts on them. Now, the next thing you want to see is that you do have standby voltage as advertised here. It says 19. It does not have to be necessarily 19. One common trick, one common pitfall with that is finding the ground and something that really works as a ground because you may not necessarily have ground on, on this heatsink. So you want to find something that you know for sure is ground and that can oftentimes be on the same connector. Okay, so you have 16 volts there. And that is not unusual <coughs> when the board is loaded. It's not unusual to find a difference between what the board says and what it actually outputs. First, there is a range. Second, that board is not fully activated. When it does, when the wake-up signal goes here, um, the voltage on those capacitors will become 400 volts because of a circuit that is engaged and that regulates the deviation and the dephasing between the current and the voltage, which has to do with efficiency, and it's called power factor correction circuit, etc., etc., and then this voltage will eventually rise to 18.5, 19. It does not have to be dead on, but it is there, as you can see, and what you do next is you activate the board by sending back about 5 volts, which again, this is what it does. It's a simple voltage divider that closes between two resistors, um, the 16, 17 volts that we have there, to ground and takes the middle point, sends it back to the PSO signal. And one of the first things that you want to do when that happens, for, for bigger boards, usually a relay will click. This board does not have a relay. Uh, one of the very first things that you will want to measure is that the voltage on the mains capacitors, it's easy to identify them, they are large, bulky, and uh, they're rated 400 and something volts. If you can read them, yeah, 450 volts. So the voltage on them should jump to 400 volts. If it doesn't, uh, either there is a problem here with your testing, uh, this makes bad contact, so it sometimes trips me as well. That's why it's bent right now. Uh, or there is a problem with the board and the power factor correction circuit does not activate. Now, <clears throat> in addition to that, the 24 volts should appear on this side. Now, let me see where in the, in the top pins we have ground, in the bottom we have 24. I'm going to do it the opposite. Uh, just the voltage will show up differently. So we have 24 volts here showing up. There is a 99% 0.9, I would say, certainty that this board will work fine. There is about 0.1% chance that when loaded, that is when you actually put more than just a jumper here, but actually load the standby circuit, um, it may fail to produce the air. The way to deal with that is, I recommend against that because even though it is possible and it does happen like one in a hundred to one in a thousand, uh, you just put a load that is a heavy resistor and test the board and see how many amps it can hold when you put that load and you write on the particular circuit, on the standby voltage, whatever, 16, 19 here, or on the 24th here. It is very rare, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but with 99, I would say 0.9% certainty, you can tell just bench testing like that, that this board is good. And if there is a problem with the TV, it's most likely in the main board. 
hope that helps. If you have questions, feel free to shoot them. We have plenty of videos with similar tests for other boards. Um, browse them and use what you can learn. Happy repairs.